<laughs> Are you excited? Let's do it. Get excited! Well, I am. I'm ready okay. to do it. Good. Keep it down out there. Keep it down out there. <laughs> We're at Legacy Disc Factory, and uh, every now and again you'll hear the machine where they're making the Frisbees. So, you know, anyway. Yep. Yeah, yeah. All right, so cool. Bear, bear with us. <laughs> bear with us every now and again. Mics are good, everything's good. Uh, lights, camera, action. Hi everyone, welcome to Pin Deep Disc Golf Videos. Today we're going to be watching the Shark Tooth Open 2020 in Bakersfield, California. My name is Mike Jewell. I am joined here with the future Hall of Famer and co-owner of Legacy Disc, Steve Rico. Yeah, thanks for having me. Pretty excited. we got a, a great foursome coming up here for round one. And uh, we're going to put on an amazing show for you guys. On our feature card today in round one, we're going to have Tommy Ekman. He's from... Huntington Beach, California. He's got two career wins. We're also going to be playing with his brother, Kyle Ekman, 10 career wins. And then we're going to be playing with Lewis Bittney, 23 career wins. And? And myself, Steve Rico. With Steve Rico. A couple of wins. That's a couple. 139. <laughs> Holy smokes. Yeah. All right, here we go. Hole one, par four, 516 feet. You want to tell us about the hole? Yeah, this hole um, plays slightly uphill um, at, at the start. You got the road OB on the right side that runs all the way alongside the hole. And you want to get your drive out here about 375 feet landing to the left over here to give yourself an opportunity to get up and down for par. You'll have some low ceiling trees right here, some thick grass, and you'll have an option from the upshot to do a sidearm or a hyzer. Or just a straight line under the canopy? Yeah, yeah. All right, we'll see what Tommy Ekman does here. All right, doesn't seem like he has any uh, tournament jitters. This looks like a perfect drive. Great start for Tommy, getting out there right where we talked about. I have a pretty, pretty good look at his upshot there from about 140, 150 feet. All right, and then Kyle puts a little too much sauce on it it looks like that thing was sailing out of bounds and it happened to catch that last tree before going out of bounds and it's uh hung up on a little bush there so we'll have a pretty easy upshot he's really close to the right side of the fairway and here's lewis just a little bit low out of his hand he catches that tall grass and doesn't really get a skip and what are you uh what are you doing here you're gonna try to do what tommy did or? yeah i want to try to do what tommy did i'm throwing an icon cannon i just want to get a Get it out there. Got a little jitters going on for the first first shot of the round. Always. 139 wins and you have jitters. Get out of here. Stop. Hey, you, that's, you stop what, uh, it. <laughs> <laughs> that's what keeps you going, man. You can't ever be uh, too relaxed. Yeah. And here's Lewis getting a little bit high. Gets hung up in those branches. As you can see, he's uh, Kyle here, he was navigating through and around this bush. Yeah, he's got to go slowly over the road, gets inside the circle there. He's going to have a nice look out at a three. And looks like you've got the straight line here with a putter. Yeah, I, I wanted to keep it low. It was a little too low. Gets hung up in that tall grass, and I'll have like a 45-footer. And there's Tommy with perfect textbook upshot. Textbook. All right, Lewis from about, what is that, 70 or so? Yeah, I'd say so. There we go. He's got to tap in for his, what is that, a par? Yeah. Oh, that's gross. You hit right on the tape. Yeah, th I thought that that was a pretty good putt. It could have stayed, but these baskets are very sensitive, so you got to have the right speed, right angles on your putt yeah. for them to stay in the basket. Yeah, it looked like Kyle's hit the exact same spot yours did, but his stuck in there, so Mach 3s are... Mach 3s are not to be messed with, that's for sure. Yeah, Tommy tapping her in for the birdie. He goes one down. Lou's going to tap in his par, stay even. You're tapping in the par, staying even. There we go. On to hole two. We've got another par three, 335 feet. And you have a couple different options here. There's a roller, sh roller shot over here on the left side. You can go up the middle as well. I feel like this hole's changed throughout the years. It looks a little more open right. than past years. So 
be interesting how to see how these guys approach this this hole. Looks like Tommy's opting for the backhand roller. And he is cruising. Wow. Oh. That had a lot of speed on it. Yeah. Yeah, he ends up out of bounds. He'll be putting for three. And then Kyle Kyle goes for the straight line hyzer, hits that tree. He's gonna be a little bit out of position for a birdie. See what he chooses to do here. And Lewis going with the forehand. Kind of gets some skip, but catches yeah. some tall grass and doesn't get any ground play at all. Right. I'm going with a mongoose roller here. Trying to kind of do what Tommy was doing. Just and um, not as much mustard on it, not as much stank. Luckily, I catch that bench and oh, I yeah. just stay in bounds there. Yeah, I remember telling you you were just you were you were cruising way too fast. And if you didn't hit that picnic bench, you were definitely out of bounds. There's Lewis hitting the lock on his upshot. We'll tap in for a par. And Kyle just laying one up, just, taking a par. Yeah, wanna, doesn't it, want to mess with it. No, I'm keeping it simple. Yep. Protecting that one down. Here's Tommy attempting his uh, his par his par save. He's probably about 60 out, I would say. Yeah. Oh, goodness. Right around it. Yeah, I th we both thought it was in the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. And here's you. You're about, uh, you're like 15 feet to the right of him, so you're basically attempting the same shot. And, oh, similar result. Yeah, it's a little bit wide. Tommy for the comebacker. Oh, high catch. left, yeah, it stays in. <laughs> you won't see a lot of those. No, not of the Mach 3s. Nope. No. <laughs> they usually <laughs> want to kick out the other way, so. Yeah, so these little 15 footers, um, they're they're not any, they're not easy putts with with these baskets. You got to make sure you got to put it right on the pole. Actually, uh, Bakersfield's kind of notorious for being windy, right? I mean, isn't this tournament cold and windy most years? Yeah, most years it is, especially on the mountain course. There's a lot of elevation, you're up on the hill, there's not much trees to block the wind, so you're always messing with some type of wind. Right. As you'll see later on, we'll, we'll be dealing with some of that. Right on. All right, moving on to hole number three, another par three. We've got 270 feet to the pin. Uh, there's an OB, this road, uh, this curb and beyond is out of bounds, so you want to stay away from that. Typically, you'll see players throw a hyzer or just straight line straight up the middle. Yeah, this hole sets up really good for a righty backhand hyzer. You'll see Kyle here. Yeah, Kyle. But, yeah, often for that same option, puts it about 18 feet away. Yep. Yeah. Lewis going for the outside route, with the sidearm high hyzer. Catch oh. that curb and stay out of bounds. I was really surprised he went with that shot because there's a lot of danger involved with it. Right. Looks like you're going for a. What'd you throw here? What is that? That is a sparkle enemy, just a low hyzer, just trying to keep it in bounds, give myself a putt at it. Yep, yep, absolutely. And Tommy's, looks like he's going to be going for the same thing, backhand. It's quite a bit higher though. Yeah, I wasn't sure if he was trying to go up and high over those or... Spike hyzer down at the basket, yeah. But it ended up okay. Yeah, he's, he's all right. He's 20 feet away. He can yeah. get that one. So this is the danger that you have to deal with when going out over the road. You have to... Oh, and that goodness. barely... That could have been disastrous, but oh, yeah. it stays in bounds. He almost had to throw out of bounds from the same exact spot where he was in. There we go. Nice birdie for Kyle. He's going to move the two down with that birdie. I hear you guys at 3 o'clock in the morning seeing him. We have uh, <laughs> Lewis up next. Boom. Oh. Yeah, nice putt. Nice putt. Saving that bogey. He's going to move to plus one. We have Tommy here for a 20 footer. Oh, oh, just a little too loud. Didn't quite follow through with that. Just let it out a little bit early. Yep. It's all right, he'll tap in for the par. A little missed opportunity, but that's okay. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of golf left here. So. 16 holes left, can't, 15 holes left. I'm bad at math. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
All right, here we go. This is one oh of the my goodness. one of the unique holes of the course. Oh yeah, 156 feet. Don't let that fool you. This hole is dangerous. I, mean, I don't know if you could tell from the drone flight, but it is super steep. I mean, Kyle's gonna throw a backhand putter here, land in a nice little spot. He's probably got about a 30 foot putt straight up at the basket. Here's yours. And oh. <laughs> And here it is rolling <laughs> all the way back to me. Oh no. And behind the bush. That's terrible. <laughs> That's terrible. That's like worst case scenario to yeah. land right there by the basket. And roll all the way back down. It's such a tricky hole because you don't want to go too far deep and leave yourself with a death putt. That's a beautiful shot right there from Tommy. Absolutely. He's got about a 15, 20 foot putt right there. Blue's opting for the sidearm. He goes a little deep, and that's not an easy putt looking yeah. over that ridge. That's a dangerous 30-foot putt, that is for sure. So here I am about 70 feet off the tee pad now. <laughs> and, I, and here I am about another 50 feet up the hill. Yeah, no, there's another 50 <laughs> feet up. <laughs> You're still 30 feet out. <laughs> yep. And then out, now I got this putt. And oh, yeah. and This is not an easy putt. I mean, it's uphill, but you got to... You can catch any metal and still roll away, so you gotta be very careful with this. Oof. And there it goes, but luckily it stays somewhat close. Yeah, you should be fine from there, right? I mean, Lou attempting his 30 footer, Oof. stays up on top. This is something I wanna point out. It's like, everybody knows Kyle is six foot, 12, right? He's tall, yeah. right? Yeah, <laughs> and, <he is>. uh, <laughs> look how much higher this basket is from him, and he's only 20 feet from the basket. Oh. And here I am from about eh, 15 feet. Okay. Still scary. This is a oh, scary 15 foot putt. Absolutely. Yeah. Saving the bogey. Yeah, nothing easy about that putt. No. <laughs> you move back to even on that putt. Tommy here, also for a 15 footer. He's looking at more of a... Oh, oh, oh man. No. That's exactly what I talked about earlier. It's, it, there's no... You don't want to be looking at that ridge because that's all you're focusing on is... Oh, yeah, the miss. ...is what can happen on it. I mean, he, he actually got super lucky that he grabbed that bush because if he misses that, he's down where you were earlier. So he got pretty lucky that he hung up there. There we go. Hits the lock. He's got a little tap in. Breathe it. A little sigh of relief there. Kyle's gonna tap in his par, keep his minus two. Tommy's gonna tap in his bogey. And he's gonna move to plus one. And we've got Lewis here. He's tapping in his par. So it looks like nobody took advantage of the 156 foot hole. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so we have hole five here, par three, 200 and 31 feet. Yep. And it plays about 350. It's very steep uphill, but you have that big giant hill to, like a big catcher's mate, you want to throw a hyzer right into that hill. Right. You're basically just trying to do just under an ace run, right? Like you're trying to hit the lock. Yeah. That's, that's the play. You're definitely playing it aggressive and, and attacking the basket. Right. Because even if you overthrow it behind the basket, you're going to be 10, 15 feet away. You see Lou misses a little wide right here. He's going to have a tester. And what kind of disc are you throwing here? I think I'm throwing an outlaw here. Outlaw? Okay. Just to make sure I get up there and hit the hit that hillside. Yep. Disking up. Sometimes you gotta disc up. Tommy throwing a laser beam. Also wide right. So he and he and Lou are gonna have a little putt off here. Alright. Oh, got some chains. A Didn't wide stick. Right, yeah. Yep. So, Tommy from about the same position, he wants to hit this one. Oh, low left again. He keeps tagging that same spot on the basket. Oh, go. nice. Yeah. It's a good putt. And Tommy needs to refocus here and really make a, make a good putt here. Yeah. There you nice. go. There you go. Boom. Got it. Keep that confidence going. Oh, yeah. Oh, 
All right, we got Forrest Gump tapping in. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna go for a run any second now. <laughs> <laughs> run up the mountain. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh man. There you go. Beautiful birdie. Good job. All right, we got hole number six, par three. 189 feet, and again, do not let that distance fool you. This hole is scary. If you end up short, you could have a super steep putt uphill, or if you go long, you said that's yeah. OB yeah, if that's, you go long? that's OB, and you go over that, that ledge you just showed us right there. It's like Kyle's got a, doing a standstill putter. Yeah, speed control is very important on this hole. Yeah, there we go. It's nice and soft. That's pretty good. Yeah. You checking the wind here? Is mm, that what yeah, I'm checking the wind. Um, with the elevation, you don't want to get the nose up and let the wind push you over that ridge. It's really easy to go long. And you don't want to go too short and have a steep uphill putt because anything can happen. Yeah, with all those hill changes, um, sometimes you're where you're standing, you can't feel the wind. And then up here by the basket, it's like screaming. So that was a textbook drive. We got Lou here going with the... Lewis, I think the wind grabs that a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it looks like it lifted it up a little bit. He'll be fine from there. It's about a 20-footer. Tommy is going to... Yeah, that's a beautiful-looking drive. Perfect. That's, yeah, you don't Absolutely wanna, perfect. Yeah, you don't want to putt on this hole. You want to be you wanna be within 10 Look feet at the most. scary putt. Look at that. Oh. And that's exactly why you do not want to putt on Jeez. this hole. It's so sketchy. I mean, I don't care if you're 10 feet away. It's still scary. If you're facing that direction that he was facing, I don't want to put it. Right. And then oh, you can't geez. really tell from the video, but there is some wind going on here. He said enough's enough. You just stab that thing in there real quick. <laughs> you had to take no time at yeah. all. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Kyle setting up. These, these hills, again, they're like super slippery. You know, getting your right footing is so, so important. Yeah, Kyle. There you go. The birdie. Kyle's going to move to four down. I missed your putt right there. You obviously made it. Um, you moved to two down. You know, Tommy's going to tap in his birdie. Here we are, hole seven. It's par three, 591 feet, and it's probably one of the coolest holes on the course. Absolutely. Very steep. You can actually reach this hole with a putter. You can go uh, left to right, right to left, go straight at it. You have different different options to go with here. So, And as you can see how far away we are, the basket basically disappears. You can't really see the basket from, from the tee, so it's that far away. I mean, this is, this is like what it feels like to throw this Frisbee. So first up on the tee, we have Kyle Lechman. He's going to hang one out to the right. He's going to go with a probably, I would think, probably a fairway. What do you think? Yeah, Conversate probably. Fairway driver? I would say so, yeah. And that's going to end up a little short, but not too bad. Yeah, he should have a should have a run from there. And what are you throwing? I'm throwing an outlaw. I'm trying to go way wide right, let the disc kind of hang out there, and then just fade all the way left to the basket. Right. It's probably one of the easiest ways to control the speed and not get, like, a giant skip on the hole. So. Right, right, right. And par is very good on this hole for everybody out there watching. You, gotta, <laughs> you, you get up and down for a three, it's, it's, you're not losing any strokes. Right, right. But if you, get a, if you get a two on this hole, you're definitely, you're gaining some strokes on the field. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like Tommy's going to hang one out to the right also. He picked a higher speed disc, and he's going to fly right over the basket. Left with about a hundred footer or so. Yeah, I'd say about a hundred, hundred and twenty feet. Okay. We got Lewis here also hanging it out to the right. Looks like he's going to be following Kyle's route, but I think he's going to be quite a bit closer. He'll actually have a run at a two here. So I'm about probably pin high with the basket. I'm, I'm probably about 30 feet above it. You mean you're pin deep with the basket? Pin deep with the basket, pin deep yes. Of, you're pin deep with the basket. You're on pin deep disc golf. All right. You're pin deep of the okay. basket. Okay. I will make sure to <laughs> keep Come that on. in mind. <laughs> so I'm just, I'm just trying to set it on this little plateau that is down there. And it's a fast green, so 
Right. I right. want to just try to right. gently set it down as flat as possible. Yeah, if you go 20 feet past that basket from your position, you're all the way down the hill, right? Yeah. Oh, good bid. Yeah, it was still a great putt. Yeah. I, you want to, I wouldn't have attempted to go for that. I would have laid it up. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. This is what Kyle does here. Yeah, Kyle's not even going to mess with it. Yeah, because from his position, if he goes 10 feet, 15 feet past the basket, he's going to go way down a hill, and he'll have a 40-foot comeback or uphill. So and Tommy's going to put one right up there under the basket. And there we go. Par. Got away with a par. Yeah, which is pretty good from, yeah. from where I was at. All right, Kyle's going to tap in a par. Tommy taps in the par. Lou got away with a, I think he got a par, right? Uh, yeah, I believe so. So yeah. here we are, hole eight, par three. It's 447 feet. One of the flattest, one of the flatter holes on the course. There's absolutely no trees in the way. Except over here on the right-hand side by the barn. If you turn mm -hmm. it over and you get tangled up in those trees, you're going to yeah, bogey potential real quick. But Everything is safe except for on top of the rooftop of the, of the barn. Okay. So basically, you're just trying to go a bomber straight out into the field and hope to have a putt for a two, right? Right. Okay. You know, Kyle's definitely got the distance to be able to get there. We'll see what he does here. He turned one over a little bit. He's going to end up below that ridge, but probably in a pretty good position to actually attack the, attack the basket. Right. And here I am with the Icon Cannon. Going out towards that barn. Yep. With my warning track power. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Maxing out at a clean 370. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. <laughs> Tommy put a nice little pump on it there. Yeah, that's, like pretty, have a, that's a pretty good shot. Yeah. Lou's in a hurry. He's got somewhere to be. I don't know, <laughs> yeah. I don't know what he's doing. Oh man. Nah, he's not in a bad position either. He can see how far away he is. Oh, he gives it like a soft little nose up oh, bit at it. Oh no. Yeah, he got a little bit more of a roll than he wanted to. And here I am about I don't know, fifty, I kinda of just plop one up there. For yeah, just, three. A, just a half C. Let's yep. go half C's here. <laughs> yeah. Tommy giving it a bid here. Oh. Yeah, he was actually closer than what I thought. So yeah, he was, yeah. felt like he had to attack that putt. There's Kyle from pin, <laughs> pin deep of the hole. He is pin deep. But he wants, he wants no part of it. He lays well, it up as well. Yeah, he's laying it up. <laughs> Tommy for the comebacker to save par. Looks like he's about 40 feet. Nice. Scans it. Beautiful putt. All right. Lou for the comebacker. Oh, just a little high. Yeah, again, if you're not if you're not putting solid on these right dead center of the chains of the pole. Right. They're probably not going to stick. Right. Here's Kyle tapping in his layup. <laughs> I'm kidding, Kyle. Come on. All right. We're on to hole number nine, par three, 297 feet. Um, not a whole lot of obstacles. Basically, you're just going to throw like a... This plays more like 370, am I right? Yeah, it's definitely a good pump up this hill. And you want to get right where that funnel is so you can have like an uphill putt at the basket. You don't want to mess around and throw it a little too high, get hung up in the wind, going uphill. That's just, that just spells disaster for sure. I think here comes Kyle. I think he's throwing a T-Bird 3 here. Okay. He's throwing kind of a laser beam angle. And he is right there inside the circle, two or three feet inside the circle. He'll have a good putt for, for his birdie. All right, I'm throwing a... Skyline Outlaw. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Gaggy. Yeah. 
<laughs> I got a I co- I got a max weight icon <laughs> cannon. No, I'm just Come on, but, crush um, me any day of the week. It, I'm just picking on it you. It does take all of me to all of my shots to, to all my power to get up there. So yeah. Okay, we got a nice little grouping going here. Yeah, that's the fun I was talking about. You want they all kind of gather right in there. Okay. There we go. Who's going to do the same laser beam? Yeah, we're all four right there inside the circle, putting for two. Kyle's going to be up first. Yeah, these putting on this course is just so scary sometimes. Yeah, it definitely could be All the elevation change. Yeah, yeah, fast greens. Just a bit outside. And from the video, it doesn't really do it justice, but it's very steep putt uphill. Oh. I just can't quite commit and get it high enough. Right. Hit the cage there a little bit low. Right, boy. Got him. There we go. Nice. Lewis shows us how it's done. We're running it down. Tommy to get away from even. Beauty. Beautiful putt. Yeah, a couple of nice birdies there. Yep. Kyle for par. There we go. And that's a scary putt. He's basically, if he misses that, he's going way back down the hill. Yeah, he'll be putting right back from where, where he, he was. Where he yeah. was, yeah. Absolutely. Edge of circle. See, there you have it, guys. Um, that was the first round, front nine of the Shark Tooth Open in Bakersfield, California. Again, my name is Mike Jewell. You've been watching Pin Deep Disc Golf videos uh, along with my co host here. Uh, Hall of Fame, future Hall of Famer, hopefully. And, uh, we'll see. Uh, yeah, and <laughs> co-owner of Legacy Discs, Steve Rico. Thanks a lot for having me. Stay tuned, guys, for the back nine. It gets a lot better, tougher holes, more uh, crazy rollaways and steep hills. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's, a, that's a big promise. All right, guys. Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. <laughs> How now, brown cow? Here we go. I'm going to do this. Gonna get past the first sentence. Oh. Whenever you touch it, so just be very careful. Don't touch the microphone. <laughs> okay. How's my hair? <laughs> How's your hair? <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome to Pin. Oh no. <laughs> He's a bucket of laps. Oh no. Okay, here we go.